new Minister for Regulation and Deputy Prime Minister in Waiting. Good morning. Welcome to the show, David. Good morning, Rebecca. And congratulations. I hear they have also been flowing from the public service. Uh, well, thank you. Yes, no, we've had a few uh, people get in touch and we look forward to uh, a relationship where we work with the public service to get better results uh, for New Zealanders in return for their taxes uh, than perhaps we have under the previous government. Uh, that's going to be a key relationship. Absolutely. And I, I just want to pick up on something that Nicola Willis did there, um, which is that y y smokers are going to pay for our tax cuts, or at least part of them now. She seemed to put that onto, onto you, the ACT Party and New Zealand First. Uh, well, first of all, I think it's worth acknowledging that the current government's trajectory is effectively to force tobacco underground. You're going to have a limited number of places where people can buy tobacco. Uh, you're going to ban uh, cigarettes with a lot of nicotine in them. And I suspect that that will take it to about the same place that the cannabis market is at, mm. uh, that you've got a lot of gangs making a lot of money selling it underground. <coughs> uh, what is now going to happen is that all those dairy owners, it's part of their revenue, uh, all of those people who are law-abiding and don't break any other rules mm. uh, can continue to buy and the government can continue to tax it. And I think that's a more realistic solution uh, than what the previous government was headed towards. Do you have any idea how much that's worth every year? Um, I haven't seen the exact projections of that change, but yep. uh, you know, tobacco tax has been bringing in about 1.7, 1.8 billion uh, per year. The Treasury had forecast that that would fall over the coming years by you know a few hundred million dollars mm. uh, every three or four years until eventually there's, there's no smoking. Bear in mind that um, smoke-free 2025 was actually five percent of people smoking. I think it's currently seven or eight, um, so it wasn't going to change uh, a, a huge amount, um, but it was going to become very difficult to understand how people would source legally and whether they'd pay any tax. So. Okay, well that's been, it was interesting to hear that this morning, but I, I want to move on to some of the um, the other parts of the coalition agreement, which we finally got yesterday. It looks like a brutal uh, negotiation has taken place, and the Act has actually killed a few of National's um, policies that it campaigned on, like the taxpayer's receipt. Um, it's pledged to cut farming regulations two to one, uh, and it looks like you might kill the EV charging network and possibly the Waikato Medical School. You, you you want a robust uh, cost-benefit anal analysis of that. Why? You don't well, think it was me, done? Let me, just, let me just start with your characterisation of the negotiation, then I'll, I'll come to those specific issues. Um, first of all, I, I think it's been a very good negotiation, and people you know, forget this. these are three political parties mm. who are competitors, sometimes quite fierce competitors, uh, in an election campaign less than six weeks ago. Yeah. Um, today, uh, we are cooperators uh, in a cabinet with a joined up and agreed strategy mm. which we're going to need because the challenges this government faces you know on the fiscal front you just saw that interview oh, with Simon yes um, you know on the social cohesion front crime and also as you're going to have Helen Clark on later in your show to talk about Gaza mm. uh, the world out there is not the benign strategic environment that Helen described it as once upon a uh, time yeah so I think actually you call it brutal I, I think it's been very constructive well brutal's Second, not bad yeah. it just sometimes <laughs> necessary right but, yeah. but coming back on those, on those yeah, issues, yeah, the medical school, the EV charging network, you don't think it stacks up from a cost-benefit analysis? Well, we, we are sceptical. Um, for example, you know, there's the argument of we need a third medical school. There's a counter-argument that it might be easier um, to expand the places at the two existing ones if the goal is to get uh, more doctors quicker for less money. Mm. Uh, then maybe you do it that way. But what we've said is, look, we're, we're open to being convinced. Let's just make sure that before we sign up to it and run off and spend hundreds of millions of dollars that we know um, you know what, what the numbers really are and do they stack up. Mm. Same thing with the EV charging network. So I don't think that um, Nicola, who you've just had on, uh, would disagree with that at all. In fact, I'm sure as a finance minister, uh, she's going to be quite insistent on the numbers stacking up for everything the government does, and in that she has X full support. Certainly, and, and we've, we've also seen a bit that hole, which we've also briefly talked about um, in the tax policy, but the coalition document also says that the parties will ensure the concepts of X income tax policy mm. are considered as a pathway to delivering National's promised tax relief. What does that mean? What it means is if you look at what ACT has proposed, it's a, a simpler, uh, flatter tax system than we have now, um, and we believe it may be possible, in fact we're quite sure it's possible, uh, that you could do it that way, you get tax simplification and give people the money uh, that the government is promising people. Now we're not going to die in a ditch over that, mm -hmm. um, but we're pleased that the agreement uh, says that we're going to commit to investigating both options as tax comes about, uh, and if that indeed uh, that the ACT plan stays 
takes up, it may be that the other parties say, yeah, actually, that's a good idea, we'll go with that. And okay. I think it's a very good example of how we commit to work, to work together, uh, be evidence-based, find the best policies for New Zealand with everyone bringing something to the table. OK. You also have um, the treaty principles. You didn't get the referendum, but you did get this treaty principles bill to be introduced and supported to select committee. Yeah. What is the point of that? Because the other parties have said outrightly, not going to happen. The well, referendum. Well, the Treaty Principles Act is actually the, the piece of law that would be confirmed uh, by referendum if, if it goes all the way through uh, the three readings. So the other parties were a bit sceptical about that. And we said, OK, well, let, let's, <coughs> just, let's just get it through the first step. Draft the bill, debate it, send it to a select committee, allow people to have a say about our treaty principles. Mm. And I suspect that people actually are going to really welcome that conversation, that it's going to be a positive thing, that the people who are out there saying this is all terrible and you're not allowed to have that debate, mm. will say, hang on a minute. Mm. Debating the tr principles of the treaty actually increases the mana of the treaty because we're finally talking about it democratically. We haven't done that. Um, it's all been decided in back rooms and the courts, the Waitangi Tribunal and the Public Service. It and does I just, depend how I just, it's debated, though, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? The agree. nature of that I debate. I agree, and I, and I just suspect that after we go through that process, uh, the other parties might just change their mind and decide it's a good thing they want, or, or they might not, but we've secured um, to get it that far, and I think that that is uh, tremendous progress after 40 years of Parliament saying there are principles, but refusing to say what they are. Ever the optimist, but, you know, Christopher Luxon was saying as recently as yesterday, absolutely not, that, you know, they would support it through that first bill stage, but that they wouldn't absolutely not support it beyond that. So what is, I suppose, you uh, know, you've well, criticised well, the well, current actually, government. He, he hasn't said that. There's, he said it on News Talk ZB. There's been some confusion. He was asked if they had any commitment to do it, so to support it beyond that. Um, so you didn't... think the door is open? Absolutely. OK. Um, because the government, you know, you've criticised the Labour government for sort of its pet projects and, you know, uh, spending a lot of time and energy on them. This does seem like the same thing, if it's not, if it's, if it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, it's an absolutely critical debate about what our founding document means to us in modern times. That has to happen. Uh, you know, two years ago when we raised the prospect, uh, nobody supported the idea of a referendum. Now it's a live debate that is going to get at least some way through the parliamentary process and potentially further. Um, the idea that having a proper understanding of what our founding document really means decided by all people mm. is, as you say, a pet project. Um, I think that's probably a poor choice of words. OK, well, you know, we can, we can figure that out at the select committee process. But, but the pet regulation... Bonds. I do want to talk about the pet bonds, <laughs> Absolutely, actually. Absolutely. So. But, but I want to quickly yeah. ask you as well, the, um, this... The this uh, Ministry of, of for Regulation, mm. it's always seemed sort of counterintuitive to me that you have a Ministry for Regulation mm. when, which is trying to get rid of regulation and mm. bureaucracy. I'm sure this is not the first time that, that somebody's put this to you. Yeah. So yeah. tell me, you know, what is that going to be? Because it's your only full ministerial portfolio as mm. well, so it must mm. be important. Well, a lot I think of work. It, well, I think it is uh, important. Uh, it's a new department. Uh, it's a, a new position. And the way I would put it is this. Uh, at the moment, we have a Minister of Finance. We have a Treasury. Uh, they are in charge of how the government spends and where the money comes from and where it goes and getting value for money for people's taxes. Now, that we may sometimes think that they're not spending it very well, but at least we have a clear view of how they do that. Mm. On the other hand, the other thing that government can do other other than tax and spend your money, is regulate how you use the property that it hasn't taken already. Mm. Um, and that, I would argue, is having a bigger effect on our productivity and our culture uh, than anything else that's happening in government right now. Oh. So the argument is, if regulation is also having a major impact on people in our economy, then there needs to be a part of government that says, what is good regulation? Is this particular new law or regulation fitting up to that? Mm. And also is prepared to go through the existing laws that affect every sector. Take early childhood education. I'm running, we're running out of time. Okay. But, and, but and, I, I and do get it. Yeah, I do actually, get it. And actually start blasting out those negative regulations. So look, it's yeah. a new thing. I think it's overdue. Yep. I know we're out of time, but I am really looking forward uh, to that change. It's an innovation that's brought to the table, and it's going to make New Zealand much better off. Great. Well, we will uh, be excited to see your feet uh, get under that desk. Yeah. Uh, David Seymour, thanks so much. So much for joining us here on The Nation. Thank you.